Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is a review of the Octavi IFR1 marketed, marketed as the world's smallest cockpit. And in fact, if I pick that up and show you it in my hand, it really is a small form factor autopilot unit. Ah, oh, you're probably looking at this saying, yes, it's got all the usual suspects. You know, autopilot, heading mode, vertical speed, alt, approach, and nav. If you look on top there, you've also got COM 1 and 2, and nav 1 and 2, FMS 1 and 2, I'll be showing you what these do. Another autopilot button, transponder, and even buttons so that you can manipulate functions in Garmin systems like the G1000, G3000, uh, GNS530, and goodness knows what. It is quite a thorough, quite a unique little system. Something that I've not seen before. Yeah, and I'll be giving you my overview. I'll be showing you what you get in the packaging. How to install and use this in Microsoft Flight Sim. Giving you a demonstration of how it works in Microsoft Flight Sim. And at the end of the video, I'll be giving you my final thoughts, conclusion and recommendations. Such a nice little unit. Well, listen, let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. So let's show you what comes in the packaging. You get the Octavi unit, Octavi IFR1 unit itself. You get a nice sort of mini USB to USB corded cable. Very nice quality. And reasonably long, I mean several meters long as well. So you have no problem with that reaching uh, wherever you need to put this. And remember, it's a small unit. Something I will be pertaining to later, or mention again later. Uh, you get a couple of instructions with it as well. Nice printed instructions. Uh, showing you how to use the different functions, which I'll be showing you later. Got a nice little card from Felix. Felix is the actual founder. There we go. Of Octavi. It was actually Dr. Felix. I didn't realise Felix. My apologies. So Dr. Felix is the founder of Octavi. And it all comes in a nice little plush box there as well which I've got on the floor just because it won't fit on the stand there but that's fine now let's just get this out of the way this retails uh, I'm going to show you this in a moment and link it down in the description retails for 151 euros now so, um, you've got to pay a bit of tax on that and post and packaging I believe this is actually a German uh, company so it probably come to around 160 pound more or less now some of you well some of you may not blink an eye at that at, at that but I did share a couple of in images of this on my discord and some people were saying it looks nice but a little bit expensive when you consider what you get with this basically you get in an autopilot unit a radio panel effectively put on there and so much more which I'll be showing you in the sim. I mean, if you wanted that with Microsoft Flight Sim, uh, and by the way, I should have mentioned this before, but this is for PC Microsoft Flight Sim only. And there's a couple of reasons why, which I'll be showing you in a moment. If you wanted something similar, you have to buy the multi-panel and radio panel. These are going to cost you probably more... And they're a lot bigger, of course, depending how much space you have. But these are going to cost you more than this actual unit. Or at least it's going to come to a similar price. So when you look at it that way, also look at it in the fact that this is, this started as a, a Kickstarter funded project. So it's not a massive company. It's, I believe it's an individual, Felix himself, Dr. Felix, running this. Not a massive company. And if you look at the finished product itself, it's just really, really quality control there, of course, but just really nicely made. 
I mean, this dial feature, it's got one of the best feeling tensions, the actual knobs here. So the inner and outer knobs, really one of the best tensions. It just screams quality. So that's all I'll mention about that. But what I'll do now, I'm going to show you how, if you, if you were to buy this, and it is actually, I believe, the actual first units that he built. So the uh, original batch that he built sold out so quickly that he's struggling, struggling to keep up with demand for this unit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how you would install this, how you would get it working in Microsoft Flight Sim. Okay, so if you're going to buy the Octavi IFR1, uh, let me show you how you get it up and running. This is the homepage, and I'm going to link this down in the description. And if you scroll down a bit, you can see you can order yours from Aerosoft.com. The partner with Aerosoft, so that's how you would order it, just through clicking that link. But let's show you, on this page, you can go to... Uh, instructions and downloads now there's two way to use this you can use the plugin that comes you you download that and i'll talk about that in a moment or you can use mobi flight or mobi flight now just be aware this does work by the way the octavi ifr1 with microsoft flight sim 2020 x plane prepared 3d and even flight simulator x which i wasn't expecting if you want it to work with prepared 3d and flight simulator x you will need mobi flights and that's a little bit more complex i'll talk you through this one this is the one i'm using and it works fine i'm going to show you this in the sim in a moment you would have to download the event module if you don't have mobi flight installed which a lot of you probably don't you have to download that so you can click on that and it will download it uh, I've got it installed already, but you would find where that is, unzip it, and then drop the files into your community folder. So I hope you, a lot of you know where your community folder is by now. But download that, unzip it, and drop that into your community folder. Then you would download the, uh, what's it called now, the an EXE file. It's basically the Octavi Microsoft Flight Sim plugin EXE. You would download it from here, unzip it, and I've got it unzipped already and in a folder. When the sim's running, let me just take it back there. Importantly, the EXE needs to be started after the simulator is running. So load up Microsoft Flight Sim, have it in windowed mode or Alt-Tab, and then just double-click this, this EXE and bang, you're off to the races. It's that easy using this plugin. So top of that again, download the MobiFlight event module. You don't need MobiFlight or MobiFlight installed. Just download that, pop it into your community folder, then download this EXE file, unzip it, when the flight sim's running, just double click that and you do have to uh, uh, double click this. You do have to have this running every time you start Microsoft Flight Sim. Just be aware of that. You can probably write a file that this will start when Microsoft Flight Sim starts or something. I'm not quite as clever as that, but it's quite easy. Just come over to this folder, double click that once the sim's running and you're off to the races. Your module will be working in Microsoft Flight Sim. Now let me show you a demonstration, the main event of the actual Octavi IFR1 working in Microsoft Flight Sim. Okay, so I'm, I'm at a random airport in the Cessna 172. Let me just jump in the cockpit and I'm going to zoom in on the left G1000 and I'll bring in the Octavi IFR1 and show you some of the functions. Firstly, comms. Concentrate on this area up here. I've got it in COM1. It's lit up, as you see, so you just press the buttons. And they will light up to show you what mode you're in. Using these knobs, you can see those numbers change. So the bigger knob, numbers before the decimal. Smaller knob, numbers after the decimal. And you can swap to make it active. So if you dialed in a com, you can swap to make it active. Do you like the feel and movements and texture resistance of these knobs? It actually feels better for common nav than my radio panel. Something I'll come back to in my conclusion later. Uh, you've got nav as well, so let's just show you. I'm sure you know where your nav frequencies are, but they're up here. And again, bigger knob, smaller knob, and swap to make it active. And you've got nav1, nav2, com1, com2. So there you go, that's nav2. And you can change those frequencies and swap to make your nav frequency active. And at the bottom of the unit, you've got things like the autopilot, of course. 
heading mode, nav to follow your GPS route, alt, approach won't light up until you're on a, an approach, and vertical speed. And they all work. I'll come back to that vertical speed in a moment. Actually, let's go on to that now. Let's show you these bottom buttons. So if you press your autopilot, you've got a second autopilot. You're probably thinking, what's that? Well, if you press that and then move that big knob, see this number here? It's your autopilot assigned altitude. So I can move that big knob to increase that. As you can see, we're above 1,100. 1, so if I can put that to 1,200, for example, sorry, 2,000 feet. And press the vertical speed button and use that smaller knob. You can see there, if I was up in the air, that would be my rate of climb, my vertical speed rate of climb. So I can increase that or decrease that. Isn't that neat? Nice little addition. XPDR is your transponder. So you need to alter your transponder code. Bigger knob, smaller knob. So big enough for first two digits, smaller knob, next two digits. So that all works fine. You're probably looking at that the same. What's that FMS 1 and 2? Well, let's press FMS 1. Let's just take off... Well, actually, let's put it back there. Take off vertical speed for the moment. Put it on FMS 1. Now, if I press the autopilot... You see that? It's got CDI above it. Press that. Oh, actually, let me just clear that. I'm not quite sure. I must have just pressed something there. But let's just press that autopilot button while we're in FMS1 mode. You can see now it's switched to my localizer of VOR1. Oh, and you can see above nav there. Let's click on nav. Is it still... Yeah, it's still moving my nav n numbers. But if I click this button in, it's a clickable button. Move that now. It now controls my course mode. As you can see, so if you're lining up with a VOR, it's just fantastic additions to the unit. Smaller knob is fine adjustments. Bigger knob for bigger adjustments. Isn't that brilliant? And you can go along, of course. Put it back into FMS modes. Things like OBS, messages, various different garments. Your flight plan with that. Yeah, it brings up the flight plan. I'll be showing you that in more details. VNAV when you need it. And procedures even on the left G1000 there. So those are just some of the features. Let me show you more. So let's show you some more features. Let me just bring in the Octavi IFR1. There we go. So I've now got it on the right G1000 as you see on the screen. And I've got it in FMS2 mode. Now if I move this bigger knob. It will take me to various different parts of my right G1000 on the sort of little menu at the bottom right there. If I go on map using the smaller knob there, I can switch. I do have the Navigraph uh, extension for this in the G1000. That was a recent release. I'll link that video down below for you in the description. But I can now zip between all them, move the bigger knob, waypoint information, and NDB information, VOR information, intersection, airport information. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Bigger knob again. Navigraph settings, system setup. I can go through all them if I want to. Flight plan, active flight plan, flight plan catalog. Let me just concentrate you on what I'm doing there on my actual camera because I'm looking at the screen at the moment. Nearest NDB. Hey, you get the idea, don't you? Get the idea. Nearest airports, list of nearest airports, and then you can just click that button and go along them if you want. Isn't that wonderful? So, if I just press clear, would that clear that box? It doesn't, but let me just get that off screen. There we go. We can go to flight plan, we can go to waypoint, we can go to map. That's perfect. Okay, so what I... Uh, You've seen these buttons on the side there. Let's play with these, shall we? You've got the menu. You can adjust your menu settings there. Direct to. And using that smaller knob. We can go along using the bigger knob to get to the next letter. E.G. Well, I'll do this pretty quickly. E.G. Let me just try to get to L, 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 next one, L, E, G, L, oh, there it is, E, G, L, C, 
you've got an enter button on this as well press enter activate i'm now flying towards london city and then you can bring up your flight plan let's just see which one's flight plan and start messing around with that adding additions into your flight plan so you can do a whole host of things with this actually just set up a route from scratch if you wanted to i do have a video on that i'll link that down below in the description as well and just use this whole unit and then get back to your left g1000 and start messing around with your autopilot settings if you're up in the air and keeping a control of your aircraft wonderful well okay that's just a little demonstration and there's so much more this can do of what the Octavi IFR1 can do for you with Microsoft Flight Sim. Let me now take you to my conclusion and recommendation. So we come to the conclusions, recommendations and final thoughts. Let's start perhaps with recommendations. Do I recommend this? Well, perhaps the person that this will most appeal to. If you're struggling with room with your flight sim setup. Now, I've got enough room for sure, but if you're struggling struggling with room or you're only allowed a little small space, this is going to be absolutely right up your alley. I mean, literally, you can hold this in the palm of your hand. It takes up very little space. That's the way it's marketed, the world's smallest cockpit. I'm going to market it with a little addition saying it's the world's smallest Garmin system. As you saw, you can do so much with this in the G1000, G3000, and goodness knows what. In addition to that, the quality of this, just the absolute shine, spit, and polish to the finished products of this is second to none. Now, you could argue, I've got, you know, I don't have one, but you could say I've got a 3D printer. I could 3D print something of this sort. You're not going to get it to this quality and level. And that does have to pay a factor in this. Probably the best recommendation I can give to this. Now, I review various different products. Beside from my typical flight sim setup, these are typically the products that I will be used day to day. I've got an addition to that now. So easy to install, you just have the little EXE running in the background, it's so small. This is going to be an addition to my daily setup. This is not just something I'm going to put back in the box and bring out on a rainy day. This is something I'm going to keep on my desk, simply because of the ease of use and sort of magicalness of using all the different functions of this. I really enjoy it, and yet it's going to be a part of my setup. I can't really give it a higher recommendation than that. But there you go, that's my review of the Octavi IFR1. I, I, IFR1. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, and I'll be seeing you soon.